To make progress, your samskaras need to be purified. Mm -hmm. Then there's, Bhamaji tells us how to do this. You can do that in meditation by asking all the impressions in your mind to come forward so that you can examine and burn them. Swamis wear saffron colored garb to symbolize the color of fire, the color of knowledge. When you have the determination, he says, quote, I have burnt all my desires in the fire of knowledge, then you wear that color. You can consciously bring forward all the latent buried impressions during meditation, telling your mind that you are ready to face them, and if you have built that kind of determination and willpower, you can allow those samskaras to be burnt mentally. They are all mental impressions. There is nothing solid or material there. All these past impressions can be burnt, and you can be free from them. The goal is to expand the conscious aspect of mind so that there is no unconscious. There are actually two known ways to purify your samskaras, the impressions that you have stored in your lifetime. But there are also only two known ways to happiness. Either you fulfill your desires and understand which desires you want to fulfill by doing your desires, or you other, or otherwise you completely renounce the desire and then reduce your desires to minimum. So if you fulfill a desire and you do it well, you can do it in a way that you become free from it. Sometimes it's easier to just have the desire fulfilled. I had a little sleeping desire from childhood to see Easter Island, that island out in the middle of the Pacific that has those big statues. And many, many years ago, I let go of that because it's like, just what's ever going to take me there? I'm certainly not going to spend a lot of money to, to take a paid vacation to go there. Well, as you know, a couple years ago, circumstances were that I was in Chile, in South America, which owns or operates, I'm not sure what the technically correct word is, that island. So we went over there, flew over on a plane and came back and, and saw all of those statues. And so it was a little sleeping desire. Now it's done. It's over. It's finished. The desire is not there anymore because it's been fulfilled. I remember Swami Rama telling us, or actually somebody, the driver of the car told me the story, that Swami Rama wanted to see the Black Forest in Germany. Pestered him for years. I want to see the Black Forest. Swamiji kept saying this to him. So finally, Swamiji was in Germany. The guy says, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll take you there. So they got in the car and they drove, to, they drove, they're driving into the Black Forest, seeing the Black Forest, and all of a sudden Swamiji's sitting in the passenger seat and he's gone. <clears throat> you know, gone. Probably, I don't know, off meditating and doing something else. Swamiji comes back and, and, and you know, fellow says to him, something like, you know, all this time you've wanted to see the Black Forest, I bring you here and now you're, you're not looking. He said, but now I've seen it. <laughs> He's still in the car. He's still in the car seeing the Black Forest. But now the desire is fulfilled. So it's one of the ways of fulfilling a desire is to do it. You wanted to go to Times Square, you went to Times Square, done, check mark, finished. So one way to fulfill a desire permanently is to do it, but do it in a way that it doesn't feed upon itself. And the other is to renounce it completely and burn it up inside. When you come to the point where there is no desire, then there is nothing to be fulfilled. You have two choices of path, fulfill the desire or renounce the desire. When you fulfill your desires by doing your action, you must remember that to do so, you must do your actions with love. You can also burn your samskaras. To burn your samskaras, you sit in deep meditation, build your determination, and tell your mind and your samskaras, at this time, my mind is only for meditation. I have to meditate and learn to go beyond this mire of delusion and confusion created by my mind. Then you allow all the impressions to come forward and you don't get involved with them. This method is called inspection within. 
or introspection and you slowly learn to become a witness. This is one method. Another method is to burn your samskaras inside that fire of knowledge and to offer all the samskaras to the light through that great fire within and then burn them. These are the two methods. And you may recognize that latter one as Guru Chakra or Jhana Chakra. So there's two methods. One, but they both here and what's being talked about here in terms of inner work. One is you intentionally are allowing them to come so that you can intentionally do nothing with them. That's the inspection within introspection. And they, they just lose their coloring. You're just not paying them any attention. You just, they come, they go, they come, and gradually they weaken, 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 and they lose their coloring. The other is to let them stream forward and stream into the fire of knowledge and burn them up. So that's probably what saying. These are the two methods in terms of internal. Now, now that's not in conflict with the part of fulfill a desire, you know, in a way that it's free. That's a different a different process. This is the inner process. Swamiji closes this chapter in this way. Remember that w what we were looking at in these two chapters is talking first about the, the negative emotions, where they come from, kama and ahamkara being two prime parts, and fulfilled in, in the emotions, the emotions that come when desires are fulfilled or unfulfilled, and then the part about how this relates to the witnessing of and the coordinating of the four functions of mind of manas, pitta, ahamkara, and buddhi, and how those arose because of the four primitive fountains of food, sleep, sex, and particularly self-preservation, and then talking about the principle of samskaras, the deep impressions that are colored with attraction and aversion, both of which are attachments and that these can be done in a way of, you know, giving away the fruits, greasing all actions with love, non-harming, and then coming, finally ending with the meditation part of how you burn samskaras inside, either through introspection, inspection within, which means letting them come, being a witness, doing nothing with them, and they just automatically start to lose their coloring, and the other method of putting them in the inner fire of knowledge. Then he closes with this. Nothing external can help you to attain the reality of truth, capital T, truth. A rich man looks at a poor man and thinks, this poor man has nothing, but he is very happy. And the poor man looks at the rich man and thinks that he has everything and envies him. Both are unhappy. You know that the external world, the world of means, cannot make you happy. It makes you comfortable, and often when you are comfortable, you forget the purpose of life. Do not forget that the purpose of life is to attain freedom from all misery and pain. To attain happiness, you don't have to travel, leave your home, or abandon your duties. This is the message from the great sages of the Himalayas. Remain at home and do your duties. Learn to do your duties lovingly and decrease your attachments. Use the word love so that you learn to give. Attachments contract your personality. Love expands it. Purify your samskaras so that the samskaras do not disturb your actions and speech. And then cultivate or accept in your mind only those desires which you can fulfill and which do not create problems for you.